Today we are counting down the top 10 most valuable records ever released by Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab. So Mobile Fidelity got its start by putting out these records that were meant to really test the limits of your uh, hi-fi stereo and began to gain a much larger fan base in the late 70s when they started to release audiophile releases of albums by popular artists. They used the best copies of the master tapes available, used their half-speed mastering technique, and they pressed on the highest quality vinyl possible differentiating their releases with this original master recording label. And over years, the labels become iconic, highly collectible, and some of the releases are super, super valuable. Just wanna give a bit of background on how I put this list together. So there are no multi-album box sets, so the Beatles box set, the Sinatra box set, not on this list as well. No CDs, no SACDs, no cassettes. This is a vinyl channel, we're talking about records here. And also no test pressing, just cause, you know, that stuff's really hard to track. How did I come up with this list? Well, I painstakingly went through more more than 1,500 releases on Discogs, and I checked on the median selling price, kept track of the ones that were quite valuable, and I was able to put together a proper top 10 list. Why did I go this length? I did it for you. Just a heads up, all the prices are in Canadian dollars. I am Canadian, so uh, sorry, deal with it if you're not Canadian. <laughs> with that being said, let's get into it. These are the top 10 most valuable Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab records. At number 10, we have Alison Krauss and Union Station Live. So this is a three LP set by an artist that is very beloved and respected in the audiophile community. This is the only vinyl pressing that this album has ever had. So an incredible sounding live album, not very many copies available. It's gonna be expensive. At number nine, we have Beck's Sea Change, the pink version with an average selling price of $635. So this is Mobile Fidelity's first ever colored vinyl release. And to this date, I believe they only have two colored albums. The other one is Weezer's Blue Album. Please let me know if I'm getting that wrong. There's only a thousand of these pressed on pink. There is a much more common to get version that is on black vinyl, but it's still valuable in itself because this is regarded as one of the best. And I've heard many people say this is the best sounding vinyl record that has ever existed. People say that this is a reference record, they test all of their equipment on it, they play this one, they wanna show off how good vinyl can sound. I had a chance to buy one of these for $200 a couple years ago and I am very disappointed in myself that I did not do that. <laughs> At number eight, we have Pink Floyd's Metal with an average median selling price of $701. So in my opinion, this is probably the most underappreciated Pink Floyd album. I think it's just as good as their best work. And I guess a lot of people agree with me that they've been searching out the best sounding version. Many believe that this is the best sounding copy, even better than UK first presses. And the price obviously reflects that. I will say that this has been kind of artificially inflated as a couple of mint copies have recently sold, bumping that median price up a little bit. I haven't been able to find production numbers, but I have to believe that this was produced in much smaller quantities than like the Dark Side of the Moon edition that they did. Those Pink Floyd nerds are trying to get the good sounding ones, so I get it. At number seven, we have the Metallica Death Magnetic Vinyl Box Set on white vinyl with an average selling price of $763. Well, forgotten by now, but in the late 2000s, Mobile Fidelity remastered most of the Metallica catalog. However, they didn't press it under the Mobile Fidelity name, so they're a lot cheaper than if they were a standard MoFi. Action's been pretty mixed on this series, so they can be had for a pretty good deal. For the Death Magnetic Box Set, is is by far the most valuable and rarest version. Why is that? Well, they only press 50 copies of the white vinyl version, 25 of which were sold through because soundmatters.com and the other 25 were sold through the Metallica fan club. You know, Metallica fans are pretty rabid. They're willing to spend a lot of money to buy cool things, get exclusive items. I get it, that's why it's valuable. Something interesting is that these were all pressed on 200 gram vinyl. It's a five LP set at 45 RPM. There is one song per side. At number six, we have Journey's Escape with an average selling price of $812. You may be thinking, well, I thought that was a dollar record. Why is this version so expensive? Well, it was recalled the first day it was for sale because of a licensing issue with the record label. The last one that sold sold for $3,800 and there are currently none for sale. This thing is very rare. I will say if there was more data available, this actually might be the most valuable mobile fidelity record. At number five, we have Bill Evans' Sunday at the Village Vanguard One Step Box Set with an average selling price of $889. So for a number of years now, Mobile Fidelity has been putting out these box sets of iconic albums using their one-step technology that bypasses steps in the conventional record pressing technology to get the best sounding records possible. This is cut as a gorgeous 2LP 45 RPM set and was limited to 3,000 copies. Nowadays, they're pressing about 10,000 copies when they do these box sets. In the last few years, Bill Evans has had a huge resurgence. This is one of his most famous albums, 
people say this is the best sounding version of it, so I get it. Limited, great album, great artist. People want it. At number four, we have Nirvana's Nevermind with an average selling price of $1,015. Generally considered to be the best album of the 90s and released on vinyl at a time when no one was thinking about vinyl. This is actually limited to 5,000 copies and for people who are always searching for best sounding versions or their completionists who want to find, you know, every pressing and never mind, it makes sense that this one's really hard to find and really, really rare. At number three, we have the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's and Lonely Heart Club Band UHQR box set with an average selling price of $1,206. In the early 80s, Mobile Fidelity started putting out these box sets of some of their most iconic albums. They press them on thicker vinyl. They're usually limited to about 5,000 copies each. Sgt. Pepper's being one of the best albums of all time, an album that sonically is considered to be spectacular, makes sense that this album would deserve that kind of treatment, and it's made it very valuable and very rare. At number two, also from the UHQR series, we have Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, with an average selling price of $1,980. I don't think there's much that needs to be said about the Dark Side of the Moon. I think that you could find a lot of other people who say more about it than I do, but another one of those completionist type albums, this is is one that collectors are rabid over and it's made the price very very high. For many years Mobile Fidelity's best-selling title was their standard version of Dark Side of the Moon so this is just an even more deluxe stream to that album. I want to go over some honorable mentions and I do this because I acknowledge that the median selling price is not perfect for putting together a list like this. You know a few sealed copies could go up for sale and shoot up the price. Someone could way undervalue a copy and it could bring down the price so I wanted to include some that were very close to making the cut, but just narrowly missed. Never know, these may end up in the top 10 at one point. So here we go. We have with an average selling price of $538. So what makes this copy so valuable versus the rest of the Beatles albums that were put out by Mobile Fidelity is that the stamper broke in the middle of production, so not nearly as many were pressed as compared to the other titles. Next we have the one step of Donald Fagan's The Night Fly with an average selling price of $580. This is one of the first one step records. It was pressed to 6,000 copies. One of the best sounding albums of all time and allegedly the best version. Another from the UHQR series, Super Tramp's Crime of the Century with an average selling price of $540. And Boston's self-titled debut album with an average selling price of $508. One of the most iconic albums of all time and one of the most regarded pressings of it to some. At number one, we have Santana's Abraxas, the one-step box set with an average selling price of $2,534. This is the first one-step record limited to 2,500 copies and to the best of my knowledge, this was only available from Mobile Fidelity. You couldn't even buy this at a record store. In my personal opinion, this is one of the best sounding rock records ever made. I've had about five different pressings over the years. It is my go-to album when I want to show someone how great vinyl sounds. And the word on the street is this is by far the best version that has ever been pressed. One of the great albums, best pressing, super limited. Yeah, I get it. I want one. I probably won't ever get one. It's really expensive. <laughs> so that is my list. What did you think? Did you love it? Did you hate it? I had a lot of fun putting this together. So uh, let me know what you think down below. Thanks for watching.